Power Rangers Dino Charge Volume 2 is out, so make sure that you get wild and grab your copy before it gets extinct. Might as well use references from the show. As I said, Volume 2 is out, and this is kind of my review of it from the episodes, from what you're going to be getting, as well as a little bit of information, and as well as kind of a quick recap on the reviews. And obviously, I've done reviews in the past, so when you see the bar at the top, that will take you to the other review, um, and also I'll include a playlist at the end. So let's start. What's on the DVD? Well, you get four episodes, which roughly comes up to about an hour and 30 minutes uh, if you kind of like watch them all at once. The four episodes on this one is Breaking Black, The Tooth Hurts, Let Sleeping Zords Lie, and Double Ranger Double Danger, and that's possibly my favourite one on this DVD. As I said, you get about 1 hour 30 minutes, so it breaks down to roughly about 22 minutes per episode. Unfortunately, there are no special features, which I do generally think this is lacking, and I would love to see some like special behind the scenes, or interviews, or all that text thing that you normally have, where you have to pause the screen, or you just keep looping so you could read exactly what the character is, their loves, their their favourite things, what they like doing, etc, etc. I think that would be really cool to see. As previously mentioned in my uh, last review of Volume 1, the quality you're getting is almost like Blu-ray. It's really nice to see a very crisp, clean picture, rather than something kind of distorted like you kind of saw on the broadcast copy as well as what you get on Netflix. These are DVD master files, so you're going to get the best quality for your money. As I mentioned in the first one about the quality is you were able to read Tyler's like journal that he got from his dad or his writing to his dad. You saw information about Fury, you saw a really detailed one. In Breaking Black you saw um, the talisman and information about it and you could read it if you paused it. And then again in one of the other episodes you see what Tyler is writing in his journal and you actually see what he's writing although he's thinking faster than he does but you can actually read a everything in that journal which I thought was amazing and if you pause it it's really nice seeing that little thing if I was actually on the show I'd actually slip some like notes in um, just to kind of give some easter eggs I think that would be really cool because no one would really look at it but I think it would be awesome. So now we're going to be talking about the episodes. The first one is Breaking Black. At the moment, each episode is kind of focusing on the Ranger, and this one is all about Chase. We find out about how he got his energy and what he's like when he's not focusing. It opens up with Chase kind of flipping burgers, but he's not paying attention. He is just literally playing on his phone, and when the other Rangers are saying, hey, come on, you need to focus, he's not paying attention. And you can see this when they take the tray of burgers away, and he just puts mayo, and he's like, Pfft. When it comes to later on in the restaurant, everyone is saying, look, you need to focus. You almost burnt down the whole uh, museum. You know? And he's like, I can focus. And then suddenly he sees his friend, the friend that actually owns the shop, who's come to him to ask for help and say, hey, some bad mojo is coming down. I need your help. Can you look after my store? please and Chase is like yeah everyone's kind of digging in saying well actually well you, you're kind of saying no you know he, he can't even focus he might burn your shop down blah 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 boom and literally we now jump to Chase actually looking after the store you see this sort of montage of him in the store being lazy playing video games and then falling asleep all of a sudden he's woken up by Spellbinder who enters the store to grab a pendant and as Chase confronts Spellbinder Spellbinder puts him under a spell and he doesn't know what's happening. You see his eyes kind of change, which I really like the, the kind of effect that they put in. And then all of a sudden Chase chases Spellbinder, jumps on his skateboard and the spell's kind of broken temporarily because that's what Chase loves doing. He loves his skateboard and that helps him focus on breaking the spell. After a bit of a fight, you know, uh, the other rangers come in and then Chase is kind of like being told like, oh, you don't want to shoot me, I'm Spellbinder. You want to shoot your friends instead. And Chase is kind of like, almost gonna shoot Tyler, uh, but he doesn't in the end because he just drops his weapon because the spell hasn't really taken over that much, but it's on its way of doing it. We also see how Chase got his energy. Um, everyone is saying like, oh, Chase can't focus, and the shopkeeper is like saying, actually, no, he can, and then tells the whole story of how this actually happened. Um, you see that Chase went off and saved the shopkeeper's um, I think it's Moana, Mo we're gonna call him Moana. Moana's like cat has been done, but Chase thinks it's a baby. And then he realizes, ah, I'm not gonna say anything bad, but boom, you know, he gets the end gem at the end because she sees the brave, the, the good quality in him to actually be like, boom, there you go. 
So yeah, that's how Chase gets his energy jump. Previously in the episode, we saw that uh, everyone is talking about Chase and that the candle makes the thing called a dino spike, which is a charger which combines all the weapons to actually break through the amulet because apparently the amulet is really powerful as well as Spellbinder's cloak, etc, etc. So when they're in this warehouse, all the rangers are attacking Spellbinder, but at this point, Chase has been completely taken over and thus therefore has been called to actually attack the rangers. Uh, the rangers have all automatically been taken over by Spellbinder, but it's still in the very early stages, so they're kind of on the floor going like, ah oh, no, what am I gonna do? Shelby has this really good idea of kind of making a makeshift skateboard uh, from a crate. She actually pushes it towards Chase, Chase jumps on it, um, and then the spell's kind of broken enough for Chase to actually attack Spellbinder to actually like stop the main control, uh, to, well, to, to release him, should I say. Spellbinder grows from the Magna Beam, and then obviously Chase and Riley use their Zords, combine it with the Megazord to actually make the Power Raptor formation, and thus therefore they defeat the monster. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of like, oh, what's gonna happen next? Sledge finds the amulet, keeps it because he knows it's gonna help much later on. And then we're back in the cafe, which is pretty much very simple. Coda takes advantage of a situation where Chase is uh, kind of mopping the floor, and he's like, well, you know, he needs to learn to focus. And everyone's like, ha 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 ha! And then the episode ends. The next episode is The Tooth Hurts. The episode is kind of annoying to me because it just shows how rude Riley is. We open up with Poissandra uh, freeing a monster that is able to make the worst cakes in the world. She wants one that people will remember her for because the cake is the most important and she wants it with full of decay, etc, etc. This entire episode is now mainly focused on Riley and Chase's friendship. Riley and Chase are in the actual base and Riley is doing the same move over and over again again and it gets kind of boring when Chase makes a sound Riley gets really frustrated and he turns around and says hey come on you need to train can you stop that I'm training blah 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 and Chase kind of he's quite mellow about it for me I just be like Riley shut the hell up because I'm doing my own thing and I can't drink what the hell Riley they have this entire argument of saying like you know Chase isn't focused he doesn't do anything he's lazy effectively and Chase says like, hang on a minute you know I train my own way I do things my own way that you don't so you know you do your stuff I do my stuff it's completely different I can't do everything you want to do because I have my own way of doing it and I think this really riles Riley and he gets really kind of angry about it but Chase doesn't care he's like no I'm gonna go do my own thing over most of this episode you see Riley and Chase kind of grating on each other when they're having a fight with the monsters. Uh, they get in each other's way. It's like, oh, I've fallen over. No, wait, you've fallen over me. How dare you? Uh, you know, don't attack. I'm attacking instead. And this is the sort of thing, obviously, will like kind of like filter out and pan itself out and make itself better. But for the meantime, it's like, come on, guys, seriously, this is really annoying. Chase and Riley have another argument back at the cafe after they've seen that the cake can hurt people, and that's how like tooth decay is. And Chase is just doing his job, but no one's told him, hey, can you leave the cake? You no, know, we're kind of working it out. At this point, when Chase has put everything in the bin, Riley's like, hang on a minute, you know, how dare you do this? You know, no one told you, you're getting in the way, stop it. In this moment, um, Chase's like, no, this is my job, I'm out of here, and then goes off. He then finds the monster and says, hey, look, you know, I'm gonna go to the place where there's most people, where there'll be more decay. And when he gets, uh, when he finds the monster, he calls it in and says, hey, I found the bad guy, I need help, can you all come here? And Riley's like, huh? He found the monster? What? It's him? And this kind of really annoys me because it shows that at the beginning, Riley has no part of like saying, hey, I want to help. It's more like, I want to do it myself or you're too stupid. You know, how would you do it? Grr, grr, grr. And that's how I kind of got this from Riley. When Chase is hit by the beam, Riley comes out of nowhere, saves Chase, and then turns around to him and says, you know, I thought you were at the skate park. I didn't think you would be here. And uh, Chase turns around and says, well, hang on a minute. No, there's a monster about. Why would I be having fun? Why would I be doing stuff? You need to, you know, you need to trust me in a way. And then I think that's when Riley actually then figures out, hey, Chase is a really good guy. All the rangers come in, and now one thing I really liked is when they do all the poses, they're doing it normally, but because Chase has got toothache, when he does certain things, he, you know, it's like, oh, I can't do it, oh, no, oh! 
And you see it when Riley kind of breaks the fourth wall, when um, he just comes up and says, no, don't worry, buddy, you're fine. Next, and that's when Coda does his moves. I kind of like that to some degree. And even when they pose at the end, it's like, oh, and he's like, oh, I can't do the pose. Oh, my face. And I kind of thought that was interesting to put in rather than just doing the same formation and then kind of neglecting it. And I'm guessing that's from the Sentai. So pretty much they defeat the monster. Uh, the monster then grows up. Um, they form new Megazord. They combine and then they sh like shoot him. They win. Boom. Then we have Riley and Chase back at the like kind of like this training park where Chase, uh, where uh, Riley is saying to Chase, "Hey, I'm really sorry." Blah 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 blah. You know, opening his heart out and Chase is listening to his music. And he's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, they start training, they start having fun, and you can see that the team's really bonding and working well. Let sleeping zords lie. This one, I think, had a lot of character growth for Shelby, mainly. We open up at the dig site where they're trying to find new energy gems, and Shelby turns around and says, hey, I've got this idea, we should be working like smarter uh, rather than like better, etc., etc., uh, work f smarter or I can't remember the phrase but it's basically they want to turn around and work faster but actually getting in a place where they're not causing themselves a lot of work she then explains like you know we should be looking at how dinosaurs do this how they eat uh, how they ate where they lie blah 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 um, and everyone's like yeah okay what do you want to do with this information and Shelby's like oh I don't know I kind of need to go all the way back to town um, because it's so hot she's drank all the drinks and it's just like you kind of think you'd have more than five cups of water or whatever you think you'd have like bottles of water in the back of the van we're back on the ship sledge has a massive go at fury um and then poissandra has an idea to like defeat the rangers this is why i kind of think that kendall has a little bit more kind of character development with shelby and kendall there's i don't know if this seems to be this like a lot of tension that kendall doesn't think that shelby's that intelligent but shelby comes along and says that she has all these ideas where they should be working uh, smarter not faster or something like that and she gives all these ideas and kendall kind of like brushes them off saying oh, what do you know you know nothing and then shelby just turns around and says look you know we should be looking at where what they ate where they slept how they acted where they died effectively and kendall's like yeah I, I can get that and she's like well you know how, how are you gonna do this and she's like well you you're smarter than me at this one why don't we make something to actually say yeah let's look into it um, to use the energy of the energy gem. So rather than just like scanning in one area, they can scan the entire planet, find the energy signature of an energy gem, boom, there you go. And uh, Kendall's like, yeah, I like that. And they make the e-scanner. They take little things from the Ankylosaur and they say, this is the, the energy from that, let's find it. Then they take the Dyan Charger and then boom, they've got an Ankylosaur that they can summon the Zord to actually help them. So it's actually really ingenious. When they start scanning the planet, Sledge and his minions turn around and actually hijack the, the signal and actually know where the, uh, where the Ankylosaur is and then they go there. Oh, it's so busy. When the rangers go to where the Zord's gonna be, they're ambushed by Poissandra and the bad guys, and they start fighting. Stingray is the main bad, uh, bad guy for this one, attaches a stinger to Coda, which then makes him go crazy and then just fight everybody, including his friends. This is kind of interesting because if you attached all these stingers to the rangers, they would just end up attacking each other and thus therefore wiping out the rangers. Why do they didn't think of this? I don't know. When the Rangers get back to the base, they talk to Kendall. Kendall's like, oh, it's my fault. Um, taking the kind of blame away from Shelby because Shelby thinks it's all about her, what she's done. But no, Kendall then goes off to where the Zord is and Shelby follows, gets in the back of the van um, and kind of hides away. They're attacked and this is when you see Kendall having a first proper fight scene with a shovel because that's how you introduce rangers together you have shovels and that's how they're initiated into them. It's quite interesting because Kendall can't fight back just yet because she's not had this experience but she does her best and she actually deflects a lot of the kind of fighting away until the rangers come up to save her. At this point whilst Kendall's being attacked. Shelby's being knocked into the Ankylosaur pit. She finds out the Ankylosaur has a stinger. She pulls it out, and then that's all you kind of really see. We well, don't see her pulling it out, but you know what's going to happen. As soon as Tyler finds out that Shelby is on her own, she's with the Zord, he rushes off because he cares about her. And we all kind of knew this by the second that they looked at each other and interacted. Boom, that's the main thing. As they all start to fight, suddenly the Ankylosaur comes out beats all the bad guys because Shelby's riding and she's like, yeah, the Zord owes me one. You know, I helped it. I've turned it back. 
And obviously what happens is, boom, the monster gets defeated, then the monster grows, they call in the Megazord, they make the Anklo formation, which is just basically like a, a ball and chain, like with a, a, a ball at the end so they can attack and it becomes really, really powerful. So now they're back here with the E-Tracer stroke E-Scanner uh, saying that they fixed it. Now they've turned around and said, look, you know, it's not gonna be hijacked by anyone else now and it should work perfectly. Now one thing is I don't understand in this part is, Shelby gets a present from Kendall from the museum and it's her favorite fossil, but it's not it's just poo They gave her a big lump of poo and say like, oh, it's a really rare rare uh, specimen rah, rah, rah. It's like really you given a poo. Why why would you give a poo? I don't know. Um, so that's that's kind of a really way to kind of close the episode. Double Ranger, Double Danger. Again, this is possibly out of this on this DVD is my favorite one. So kind of breaking this down because it's quite a long video already. Um, Poissandra and Sledge are kind of talking and Poissandra wants to defeat the Rangers. She gets a clone monster that is able to clone the Rangers. Then they go down to Earth. Tyler is writing his book about the team, about like each person's how amazing they are um, and what they mean to him. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Cody jumps down from a tree, says that there's some people coming along. Suddenly it's kind of backed up by Kendall. She says, yeah, there are bad guys in the area. Tyler takes the uh, the E-Tracer stroke scanner. Um, I wrote it differently down on here. So he takes it back to his car and then all of a sudden like the rangers come out of nowhere and they jump in the car and say, look, you know, we've got to go. And I love it that Chase goes, shh, over there. I love it. Shh. I love it. I think this is the best clip in the entire thing. As Tyler is driving off, the car breaks down, he gets out. Shelby's like, hey, you ran away. Um, I do think that this next part is kind of like a horror thing. So when Shelby's saying like, you know, you left us alone, uh, Tyler's like, no, I actually see you, you're right here. And it could definitely just be like a horror film type thing, which I think is kind of cool. Tyler's been knocked out. Um, the range back of the base are explaining why. Um, they say like, you know, it's re really weird that he said that they're there with him, blah, blah, blah. Um, so in the end, uh, they all go off looking for Tyler. Tyler wakes up, uh, he summons his dino bike or dino charge cycle and then morphs, does a quick morph and then heads to the city. Back in the city, Fury and the clone monster are there. They're kind of looking over the rangers running about um, and Fury is annoyed that Poissandra has the, the tracker. So the monster clones more rangers to send after them and says like, you know, they're gonna be fighting themselves, they're not gonna know which one's which, then the clone rangers go off. Soon the other rangers are like, what are we gonna do? You know, what's happening? Oh look, there's the clone rangers. Um, they start fighting, they can't really figure out why, but Chase apparently knows which one is good and which one is bad. He then says, hey, I put these flowers in your belts when you weren't looking and then I like, this is how we know the bad guys are the bad guys. That's, that's pretty much it. Tyler's heading to the city. He's got this really cool hood interface, which I kind of think they could have done a lot more, but I'm guessing they didn't really have enough time. So therefore he's uh, going to the city, but then Fury attacks him out of nowhere. They have this whole kind of talk about stuff. Um, he goes and attacks them. Um, and it's pretty much the same sort of thing that you would guess. Tyler wants to know what happened to his dad. And then suddenly Fury's like, oh yeah, I know who your dad is. You know, ha 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 you know, You've got weak fighting skills, blah, blah, blah. At this point, the Rangers really need the help of Tyler, but Tyler's got this kind of struggle of does he go, does he not? As he's like about to go, he sees that this gold thing inside Fury is like trying to escape, and he thinks, could that be my dad? In the end, the ranger saying, look, we need need your help. You know, you need to help us, otherwise we could be defeated, or we can be really, really hurt. Boom, then Tyler makes the choice of just running away. Then Tyler makes the choice of actually joining his friends. They defeat the monster, the monster grows up. The monster then creates a giant version of Fury. Uh, the Rangers defeat both the monster and Fury or clone Fury and then that's kind of really it. They've defeated the monster, they see that Fury has the, the scanner from Poissandra, he's going off, they destroy it um, because they don't want the like it to fall into evil hands and thus therefore Fury gets the charger from the Pterozord or the Pterodactyl, that's going to be called Pterozord, uh, and then that returns back to it. Then Fury looks in the in the wreckage and he finds the Terra Charger, he takes the Terra, terra Charger, terra, 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 terra Charger! <laughs> and then they, he goes back to Sledge. The Rangers then return to the base, they talk about everything, they say that there's teamwork, um, that they're united where Fury and the others aren't, and that's their weakness, and thus therefore the episode ends. Now my kind of final thoughts are, the DVD is great, it's nice to actually see the story progress and that the fact these are coming out quite quickly, as well as seeing as the story has been well written. Uh, there are parts where we know the Rangers aren't perfect, and this is really cool because it shows you that they're not like 100% 
100% in sync that they need to work together. And this kind of, to me, made it work really, really well. Um, and, you know, the story is quite enthralling and interesting. I really do like Double Ranger, Double Danger, because I think that is the best one that they've done so far. So Rangers, your question today is, are you gonna be guessing it? Are you gonna be adding it to your collection? What's your favorite episode on the DVD? Let me know down below in the comments. And if you've liked this video, like, favorite, comment, and subscribe. Check out all the other videos on the channel. And as always, Rangers, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a bit.